Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to another episode of Building on WordPress. My name is Josh Donnelly and in today's episode, we are going to look at the basics of custom post types, what it means, why you need them, how you work with them, and how you implement them on the front end of your website. So without further ado, let's dive in. So here we are on a fresh install of WordPress. We wanna understand what is a post type and what is this thing that people keep talking about which is a custom post type. So within the WordPress ecosystem, there's an underlying database for all of your data and then there are data structures on top of that. And one of those data structures is called a post type. And within WordPress by default, you have a posts post type and you have a pages post type. If you have WooCommerce, you have a products post type. Basically, they aren't databases, but I like to think of them as like mini databases on top of the main database. Really, they are data structures or ways to manage the data and organize the data within your WordPress database. So if you have a blog, you want those to go into posts. If you have pages on your site, you want that to go into pages. If you have products, you want those housed in products. You don't want to be creating products in your blog post area. That wouldn't make any sense, right? If you wanted to create an events calendar, you wouldn't want those events to be in posts. You'd want them to be in events. And you'll even see plugins doing this, right? So if we were to go into our plugins, click add new, and we were to add, let's just do the events calendar by tribe. Now we're not going to go ahead and configure any of this, but the thing you'll notice is this plugin when installed created a post type and that post type is tribe underscore events. So that post type is what you are seeing here. And that's a data structure for all the events that you're going to add into your database. So now that we've talked about what a post type is, what is a meta field? Well, if we jump into our blog post here, and we add a new one, you'll notice that we have various actions that we can take on the right hand side here. So we can add an excerpt. And this right here is a meta field for the excerpt, we can add a featured image, we can add tags, we can add categories. So these here are all considered meta fields. But what if we want additional meta fields? What if on our blog, we also wanted a meta field for I don't know, let's pick something like the author's favorite color, right? So anytime that our authors are creating a blog post, we want them to also be able to enter in their favorite color. How do we do that? Well, let's jump back over to the back end of our site here. Now we could do this manually in our functions.php, but there's some really great tools out there to create and manage custom fields. My favorite, which you'll hear me talk a lot about on this channel is advanced custom fields. Now you can download a free version of this directly from the plugin library here. If you click plugins, add new, jump over here and type in ACF, you will see advanced custom fields. The free version is right here. And if you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you know that I am a huge fan of the cornerstone builder, which comes pre bundled with advanced custom fields pro. But for the sake of this example, we are going to just use the free version here, which might be what you are starting to play around with in your build as well. All right, so with advanced custom fields installed, you'll notice right on the left hand side here, we now have ACF. Now within ACF, let's go ahead and click on that. You'll notice we have field groups up here at the top. We have post types, we have taxonomies, and then a bunch more features that are buried here, which we can talk about at a later time. So our goal is to add the author's favorite color to the existing post type of posts, which are our blog posts. So we're going to jump into field groups, we're going to click add new. For the sake of clarity, we're going to give this a title called blog. So we know that this is assigned to our blog and we can pick a field. And you notice there are a bunch of fields in here to pick from. There are email fields, URL fields, image fields, etc. For the author's favorite color, let's just go with a standard text field. We want to give this a label. So this is just a title. So we'll say author's favorite color. And then when you tab down to the next item, you'll notice that it automatically tries to title your field name. I think this actually works pretty well. Author's favorite color. Maybe we just do something like favorite underscore color. And then you can populate a default value if you wanted to, but that wouldn't make sense here. So we're going to go ahead and leave that blank. You'll notice that we're currently in general, you can jump into validation and make it a required field or add a character limit. We can jump into presentation. And this is where we could add instructions. Please enter your favorite color here. You could add placeholder text. So we could do something like EG 
blue so that the authors see that on the back end and then you can add some other info here you could choose a width this gets into styling we're not going to touch on that today and then we could also get into conditional logic so we could say we want to add another field this field is going to be authors favorite number and we'll just do favorite number and so we're going to add conditional logic enable and say if author's favorite color has any value so if they started filling it out then we're going to show favorite number as well we could just save this but it doesn't know where to go so we actually need to scroll down one more step here to settings and say okay we want to apply what we're building here to the post type is equal to post so now we'll go ahead and save now when we do that and we jump back into posts here let's go ahead and open that in a new tab click add new post we start creating our article two you'll notice we don't see our favorite color off to the side here we see it at the bottom and that's just because of a setting selection let's jump back over here and under settings we'll go into presentation we're going to scroll down to position and we want this to be on the side which is where it is for all of our other items in the posts post type so we'll go ahead and save that change and we'll refresh this here we'll type article two again here and now you'll notice on the right hand side i have blog as a field group and right here i have author's favorite color as soon as i start typing let's type green you'll notice it immediately met our conditional logic values here and so now author's favorite number showed up and i could type in a favorite number but if i publish those changes and I view this on the front end, you'll notice I don't have our fields anywhere to be found. And that's because we haven't added them to our template yet. And so this is where your builder comes in. Again, as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of the Cornerstone Builder, and so that's what we're gonna go ahead and install here. But if you use another builder, as long as you have the ability to edit layouts and templates, you should be in good shape. So we're gonna go to Appearance, we're gonna go to Themes, and we're gonna upload the Pro Theme, which comes bundled with Cornerstone. So we've got the theme installed, we've got our license validated, and we should be in good shape now. Now again, if this is where you were starting, if you plan on using the Pro Theme by ThemeCo along with the Cornerstone Builder, you will actually see that you have access to ACF Pro directly here in their pre-bundled extensions and so you could go ahead and use that but again we're just using the free version for the sake of this example so now that we've done that we could jump into cornerstone here we'll open that up in a new tab let's go ahead and create our blog template so we'll click plus an individual blog is a single post type or a single layout so we'll go ahead and create a single layout we'll call this layout blog we'll add under settings the conditions of post type is post so this is applying to our blog posts and we want to make sure we're previewing the proper thing so we'll jump up to our preview pane here and make sure that we have post selected and we're going to choose article 2 because that's where we've added some of our meta fields that we want to test perfect let's go ahead and save this again here I'm just going to use a template here for the sake of speeding things up and we'll add that template in so let's actually use this area here and we'll just pop it in we'll actually grab let's just do it from scratch we'll grab a headline pop the headline right in here and we want author's favorite color to show up there so let's first let's make this a little larger here so it'll be article 2 and then favorite color so in here in the headline we'll open up our content and we're going to go into the raw content here and open up our dynamic content we're going to type in acf you'll find a lot of deep integration with acf if we click on post field here it will automatically find a lot of the associated acf fields there are more complex fields that may not show up here and you have to enter the value manually but we're not going to get into that today so here you'll notice we have author's favorite color so we can click on that click add you'll notice it adds the dynamic content code here, which then displays whatever the author's favorite color is on this post. If we also wanted the author's favorite number, we would just do the same thing here, type in ACF, post field, select favorite number plus and there we have it so green and 12. now that might not make a lot of sense out of context so maybe we add in favorite color and favorite number something like this here so let's go ahead and save this view this on the front end and this is looking pretty good but what's the benefit of these meta fields well the nice thing about meta fields is that they're dynamic every single new post you create within your post type can have these meta fields associated with it so if we jump back over to the back end of wordpress here we go into our articles that we were creating and we click add new we can create article three we can add instead of my favorite color being green it'll be pink and my favorite number will be 20. i go ahead and publish article three and i view that on the front end 
and now it automatically pulled through pink and 20. So this is great. Now you can kind of see what some of the power is of custom fields and being able to assign those custom fields to default post types like the blog posts here. You could also do this in WooCommerce with products. But what if we want to create our own post type? Let's say that we're building a website for a company and they want sort of a team members database, right? So we want a post type for team members, but that's not posts, which is our blog. That's not pages, which are our pages. So what is that? Well, now we're getting into a custom post type and we can create that custom post type directly inside of ACF as well. So let's go ahead and click on ACF here again. Let's jump over to post types. We'll click add post type. We're going to name the plural label team members. The singular label will be team member. The post type key, we're just going to call this team. Taxonomies, we're not going to worry about that just yet. This is going to be a public custom post type because we want to display this on the front end. It's not hierarchical, so most of this we can leave the same. But we are going to jump into our advanced configuration here, and we are going to make a few adjustments. Now, these are personal preferences of mine, but just follow along. I do want this to have title. We want to be able to add the team member's name to the title. I don't want the Gutenberg editor. We're going to override that with our own field. So we're going to turn off the editor. I do want the featured image. Maybe I want some other items, but I'm going to just leave these two here. So title and featured image Our labels. So this is what's going to show up throughout WordPress for us. Menu name, maybe I just want the menu to say team. So over here, just because team members is kind of long. Visibility, we should be able to leave most of this by default. URLs. If you want to have a team member page where you can then pick the individual team members, kind of like you'd have a blog archive and then you can pick an individual blog, then we need to have archive enabled. So under URLs, we're going to jump down to archive and we're going to enable this. And we just want to use our standard key. So we're not going to add in any custom slug. We'll go ahead and save. And you'll notice immediately that on the left hand side here, we now have a custom post type for team. And when I hover on that, it says all team members and add new. So let's go ahead and click on all team members, which is currently an empty structure here. And we are going to click on add new. As soon as I do that, you'll notice I have a title and a featured image, but I have nothing else. And that's because we don't have any custom fields. So let's jump back over to ACF. We were on post type here where we created team members. Now we're going to jump over to field groups. In our field group, we're going to add a new field group and we're going to call this one team. And now we are going to create a couple of fields. This first one might be called job title and we'll just go with the standard field name here. Let's create another field which will make a URL and I don't know, maybe this is like a LinkedIn link. And so this will be a link out to their LinkedIn profile. And so we want to also include a headshot. Now we could just upload this directly to that featured image slot. But when I'm building this for clients, I like it to be one simple top to bottom form. So I'm also going to click on add field here and we're going to make this an image field. We're going to call this team member picture. But instead of an arbitrary field name, we want this to be underscore thumbnail underscore ID. And the reason for that is because we want this to apply directly to the featured image. So we're using the field name of the featured image field. Once we've got all of that done, we need to scroll down to the bottom and under settings, we want this to apply to post type is equal to team member. Go ahead and save. And now when we go and click on all team members, add new, you'll notice we have a title, our job title, our LinkedIn link and our team member picture. Now, if we didn't want to have featured image over here, because sometimes these can conflict, right? If you upload one here, it's probably going to be overwritten by this one here, which has nothing in it. So it'll look like it's not saving. So what we could do to solve for that is go back into post type team members and we'll turn off the featured image field by default. We'll come back over to team, add new. And now featured image is gone from here, but we still have our team member picture here. Now for a true team member custom post type like this, you might want to get a lot more sophisticated than this. But for the sake of example, let's just go ahead and put some data in here. So we'll just do Billy Bob job title CEO of the world uh, LinkedIn link we will do LinkedIn.com and a team member picture. Let's go ahead and put some images in here and we'll go ahead and associate those. Let's add another team member here. Susie Sue. Jenny Jen. And Kenny can. All right. So we've entered each of those individuals in. You'll notice if we jump over to all team members here, we now have Kenny Ken, Jenny Jen, Susie Sue, and Billy Bob. And these are all individual posts within our team members' custom post type. 
But how do we display this on the front end? Just like we did for our blog post, we are going to jump into Cornerstone here. We are going to create a new layout. This layout is also going to be a single layout, but instead of this applying to our blog post, we want this one to apply to our team. We're gonna to go to settings, and under our settings, we are going to go to conditions, add condition, post type, is, and we want team member. And we'll go ahead and save. Let's jump up to our preview here and make sure that we are also previewing team members. And in this case, we have Billy Bob selected, so we know we are looking for Billy Bob's info while we're building. Now, let's just for the sake of example, start from scratch. We are going to do a side-by-side -side here. Now, we're not gonna worry about a whole lot of layout and design and formatting and all of that kind of stuff here. This is mostly just to show how you would pull this through and assign it. So on the left-hand side here, let's click on this column. We'll go to advanced on the lower layer. We'll set this as an image. And instead of picking an image, which wouldn't make sense because we want it to be dynamic, we are actually going to go down to this source line here, click on the dynamic content, and select featured image. And that immediately should pull through our team member here. As we scroll down, let's give this just a little bit of vertical height. We'll say 550 since these are vertical images here. And we may wanna also round out that border there a little bit so it looks nice and modern. Cool. All right, now we also know we wanna pull through a headline which would have the team member's name. So we would do this here, go ahead and delete the placeholder and just pull through the post title. Let's go ahead and make that a little larger something like this here, and I think that's looking good. Now, we might wanna pull through a couple more fields, so let's just go span, and uh, let's pull through our ACF field. So we type in ACF, we scroll down to our post fields, because these are individual team member posts. Click on posts, and we can begin selecting our fields. So first, we want his job title, and we'll add that in. So Billy Bob, CEO of the world. Now, we might want a social link, so we could go social, Drop that in here, click on this, jump down, grab our LinkedIn icon instead, and give this a URL of his URL. So we'll type in ACF again, go to post field, and add in his LinkedIn URL. Now, when you click on this, it'll take you out to his profile. You see his title, and there we have Billy Bob. If I go ahead and save this, and I jump back to our team members here, and now I open each one of them up in a new tab, you'll notice that single layout template that we created that is digesting our ACF fields on our team member custom post type is now applying across the board. So here's Kenny Ken, here's Jenny Jen, here's Susie Sue, and here's that Billy Bob that we started on in the builder. So in a nutshell, we've learned about post types, custom post types, advanced custom fields, and creating layouts within the Cornerstone Builder that digests all of that data and applies it to the proper post types. As always, I hope you guys find these videos useful. There is so much that you can do with ACF. I look forward to seeing what you guys create, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.